The first thing we're gonna need is a coffee cup. A coffee cup is gonna give us an idea of the size of the coaster that we want. So, got a coffee cup here. We're gonna break out the old tape, measure the old fashioned way. Measure it up. Up and up. Tape measure. This coffee cup looks like it's about three and a half inches. So I'm gonna go about four and a half inches for my coaster. So let's try to find the coolest looking four and a half inch piece of wood we can. Four and a half by four and a half. So we're gonna make a four and a half inch mark here. Front. Four. Uh, marking it on the front so that I can find it with my table saw blade. Grab my square. Square it. Waste mark on the outside. I'm going to keep this part. I'm going to check and make sure this is square on the end. It looks great. We need to ask it. Not so much on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this side against my fence cut and then we'll cut this off before and half as well. So next thing we need is some fancy colors to make this thing look better. Here we go. Can't come tomorrow because I have an appointment. Oh, okay, that's all right. So we have a number of veneers here. We got some dark stuff. We got some light stuff. We got some medium stuff. The color's really not that important. Unless color is important to you. The main thing is we have a nice straight cut and. Uh, and then we get creative with it. Be as funky and creative with this project as humanly possible. The highest score will go to the funkiest, most creative person. So, tools for this project. You're going to need a utility knife. I'm not going to provide one to you. If you want to hurt yourself, you're going to have to ask your parents. So, this old knife is kind of old. You're going to get a new one. The sharper, the better. If you have dull scissors, this project is going to be difficult for you. So, I'm going to use just as much blade as I need. I got a ruler for a straight edge. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a straight edge. So, straight edge time. Now, I don't need all of this. This is a great big sheet. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rough in about four and a half inches just so I can make some slices. You guys will see where I'm going with this in a minute. I'm not going to be over explanatory with this because it's kind of the fun of it because I want you to run with it. Okay. So I'm going to go a slightly oversized because I want a little overhang that I can trim off afterwards with my colors. So I'm going to find my line and then I'm going to go just over it, just barely over it so I have a little bit of overhang. And then I'm going to cut along the grain very carefully. You notice I have scrap wood underneath. Drop your knife. Make sure you're wearing uh, sandals like Daniela. So that when you drop your knife, you stab yourself in the toe. Okay, now I have something roughly the size of my coaster. I'm going to take my knife again. I have a nice straight edge here, luckily. But if you don't have a straight edge, you can create a straight edge very easily with your knife again. I'm going to zip a little piece off. That wasn't very straight at all. Okay, so the issue with this is it likes to follow the grain. So if you have a look at the edge I just cut, it's very crooked. So what you want to do is you want to get away from that grain if you can. This is where the creativity comes in. I'm going to go at an angle, and I'm going to score it first. 
and I'm going to keep making light passes. If I try to cut too deep at once, I won't end up with a straight edge. Now I have a straight edge. So avoid the cut immediately straight through the wood because it wants to follow the grain. You end up with this cut. If you score your piece first and make multiple cuts, you're going to get a much straighter cut. Plus, this angle cut is beauty because now I'm going to cut another angle. And you'll see where this is going in just a minute. So I've scored this multiple times. And now I place it on my coaster and the magic begins. So I'm going to start making a cool, funky design with my coaster. I'm going to take a lighter piece and I'm going to get some links out of that. Now be gentle with your pieces. If we are, you know, chucking them around and rammy and whatnot, what you're going to end up with is a bunch of shattered, broken, splintered veneers. Anybody want to guess how we get this out of a tree? We learned this in grade 11, grade 12. Anybody know how we make veneers? A couple ways to make veneers, you can slice it with a giant knife, or we can turn the log and peel it off. That's kind of cool. So here we got veneers. Okay. So my next cut, make sure I have a straight edge to work with. This one looks straight. Check it with my straight edge. Now I'm going to make a new cut at another angle because funky is good. Go crazy with this. There's uh, many different ways to do this. You can make a checkerboard, chessboard pattern. You can, you can go all different ways with this. Just make sure you have scrap wood underneath. So you can sort of see this is kind of taking shape now. All I'm doing is I'm lining up my straight edges and I'm allowing the wood to, to do the creativity for me. I'm gonna take my boring medium brown cherry and I'm going to, no, I already used cherry. My next piece is gonna be out of black walnut. And I'm gonna score that a couple times. Ooh, very brittle. Make sure I have a straight edge to work with. By zipping off a couple of straight edges here. Oh. So it really wants to follow the grain. So I'm going to lightly score the edge until I eventually make my way through. There we go. Turn it around. And score my edge again at a different angle. Okay. So I got three pieces here. No, not so like I say, pattern doesn't matter. It's all up to you. Just make sure you have a little overhang. And you can see where I'm going with this. I'm making a I'm making a little something something here. Not sure yet. I'm just letting the wood decide. Just like Michelangelo. Just kidding. We have nothing in common. He was a genius. Okay. So what I can do is I can line this guy up here. I can roughly find the width I need and I can make a little pencil mark where I want to cut it top and bottom. Like I say, exact, it's not an exact science because we're going to trim the outside of this with a flush cut bit after we glue it. So I don't want you to worry too much about being exact. All I want you guys to do is have fun with this. So a flush cut bit is a router bit with a bearing on it that allows you to cut the edges off 
of a project like this without cutting the, the project itself. It's got a little bearing on it that rides on the, on the MDF core. So we'll show you that tomorrow after I pull this thing out of the clamps. But we're going to need to hold this together for when we go to glue it. Plus, we don't want the glue popping through. Okay, so green painter's tape because it, it doesn't hold super strong, so it won't ruin the wood. Um, it won't stay behind, hopefully. That's the goal. So there's a couple different ways to do this. The way that I like to do it is, uh, is I'm actually going to tape roughly just take down my very first piece so it doesn't move and then from there I'm going to I'm going to get it roughly where I need it with maybe a little bit of overhang and I'm just going to tape it in place just temporarily and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece long enough so I got a piece of tape on my seam so part of it is under this piece I'll turn down my camera here Part of it is part of the tape is under this piece, and part of the tape is going to be under my next piece. And the really important part here, you notice that's why it's important to get a really straight line, so that when you glue this together, there's no seams, there's no gaps. And that's what we're going to try to do here: is line this up just so. Now it's kind of wiggling, so I'm going to retape this at the beginning. Okay. Not really super happy with that placement, so I'm just going to pop this easy to pop off tape. I'm going to line it up a little bit better. There we go. Long and okay. Okay, now we can carry on. More tape. Now keep in mind, this isn't what I'm going to see. This is the side that gets glued. So this is my reverse side. So if I like one side of the veneer better than the other, I gotta make sure that that's the side I'm gonna see is against the tape. In this case, I don't care, like it all looks pretty good. But just keep that in mind that when we take, take the tape off, that's the side we're going to see. Okay, so my veneer is done, it's ready to glue. So what you're actually gonna see is this side once we pull the tape off. But at this point, we are ready to, to glue it down to our coaster, so the fun begins. We're gonna get a really thin skin of glue on here. If you use too much glue, um, you're, gonna end up with, uh, you're gonna end up with lots of bubbles. So we're gonna need glue, wax paper, a clamp, and a flat piece to sort of press down on it. You've got your coaster. Now the good side down, uh, the side that I'm that's not going to be covered. So this one has a little knot and some breakout. So I'm going to flip it. Uh, this side is going to be down on my table. This is my good side. I'm going to see. So I'm going to put that side down. I'm going to have my project on top, directly glued to that. I'm going to have wax paper on top of that, so I can both roll out any air bubbles. Nobody wants a bumpy coaster, your coffee cup's going to fall over and ruin your table. I won't do that. Okay, moment of truth. So, we're going to sit it down, we're not going to try to slide it around too much. We're going to get it exactly where we want it the first time, corner to corner. Yeah, right, Mr. Lawrence. Okay, done. Now I'm going to trim this, so I'm not too worried about the position. We're gonna wax paper it, roll it out from the center to the outside. Flex, this thing is already curling on me, so we're gonna get it stacked. This, uh, keep messing around, Mr. Lawrence, and see how this thing ends up. Okay. Thank you.
to get. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna work back and forth, clamp to clamp, so I get nice even pressure. And make sure you clamp it somewhere where your parents aren't gonna go, why did you clamp that there? We have to eat dinner. Okay. Okay. Do we get glue too? Yeah, for sure. We're gonna we'll give you glue. It's dripping. Yeah, that's okay. Dripping is good. Um, the little squeeze out is good because it means that we're, we're pushing that glue out and we're getting just the layer that we want. Squeeze out is good. They would yell at me. Yeah, your parents would yell at you. Don't do that on the kitchen table. So we're gonna see how this looks tomorrow. First attempt at a coaster. Okay, we're gonna jump right into it, coaster time. So, the big reveal, the coaster's out, look at it, it's great. Except when we were gluing, I played around too much getting the clamps on and I totally missed the coaster. So that's fine, we've got a big gap. But the rest looks kinda cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it, we're gonna take off all these ugly edges of the glue and the extra veneer, and we're going to, uh, oh, you may like it, good. So you can make one of these too, very simply, very easily. And by the end of this class, this thing is going to look very nice, very professional. So we're gonna get the sharpest blade we can on the table saw. We're gonna zip this off a little bit smaller. So I'm glad I made it oversized, a little bit bigger than it needs to be because uh, it's, uh, it's not pretty. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is trim two corners to 90. Use those as our reference edges to cut same width and length. Okay, so we're just going to square one corner using the table saw. I'll do this corner because there's less overhang. On our table saw. Okay, so our surface is pretty nice. I think we're okay there. Um, as far as our uh, surface goes, I'm just gonna break the edges with our sandpaper in the same direction as the grain so that um, I don't get any peeling. If you don't break the edges like this, you'll start to get little um, splinters coming off over time as these things get beat, banged around on your table or or whatnot you just kind of want to break the edges over you can do this with a router but you're going to want a sharp router <laughs> if you use a not nice router you're going to end up with some more splinters Steady. Just taking the corners off. No sharp corners allowed in this zone. Unless you want a weapon. Okay, so we're good. Things all cleaned up, all the corners are taken off. It passes the old finger test. Pretty happy with it. Let's uh, clean it up and put some oil in this thing. So, I mean, it's MDF core on the side. It's not that nice to look at. It's a coaster, it's gonna get beat up. But I, ideally, if you wanted to, um, you could uh, you could mill up some, some softwood this thin and, and use that as your base 
the thing about it is with it with a solid wood you're taking a chance on it warping the thing about um composite wood like this excuse me manufactured products are they're so they're so stable the likelihood that they're going to warp bow cup things like this not going to happen this stuff is so stable because it's glued together. We have wood glued to a bunch of sawdust, MDF, uh, medium density fiberboard, is what MDF stands for, and uh, and it's not going to move. Okay, so this wood is cupping. So you can get a chunk of this, get it a little wet, get it all over your project, and then uh, wait a few minutes and then give it a clearing wipe. So on the one side. I get a little bit of oil, I get it on my project, and you can already see it's starting to shine up really nice. The color's changing a little bit, and it will always get a little bit darker. Um, even, especially maple, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely darken a little bit, but the most important thing is that it's protected. So I'll, I'll do, my, uh, do my edges first. So the MDF, same thing, it's gonna get super dark. But it doesn't look too bad. You know, it's not like plywood where it's like, oh, plywood, ah, you should cover that up. Like MDF core, that's not the worst look in the world, right? You got a little variation, a little contrast. I'm just cheap, right? So I'm gonna use MDF because it's cheap to use. So beyond a rag, your other option is a brush. I like to use foam brushes because I can throw them out. We're not exactly going to clean up a brush that has poly in it because um, poly is oil-based and it doesn't wash out very nice. It just gets sticky. So don't try to wash these with water. You can just chuck them after. So the other one that I like to use is a foam brush because we like to uh, we like to go we like to wipe in the direction of the grain. And, uh, and man, oh man, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, before and after, all right? Ooh, look at that gloss. Isn't that sweet? Right? So now we're talking. Now we've got a cool looking coaster right here. So you let it sit a little bit. Let that stuff soak in. Don't just wipe it up right away. You're going to want to let that soak. Now, if you do have a lint-free staining cloth, even better, because lint will stay behind. Again, it's a coaster, not too worried, but if you can get something really clean to, uh, to wipe, to do your final wipe with, all the better.